Today is Thursday, July 8th, 2004. This is the beginning of an interview with Mr. James M. Barnwell. Mr. Barnwell is a veteran of World War II, where he served from December 1942 to 1946. This interview is being conducted at the Atlanta History Center in Atlanta, Georgia. My name is Frederick Wallace, and I am the interviewer. Uh, Mr. Barnwell, as I explained to you earlier, this is your story, and we want you to tell it in your own words and in your own way. Uh, I would like for you to begin by telling us where you were born, uh, when you entered the service, why you entered the service, and where you were at the time that you entered. So this is your opportunity to share your experiences with your family and with the American people because your story will go into the archives. So this is your story, Mr. Barnwell. Will you begin, please? Well, <clears throat> I was born in Atlanta, Georgia on March 9, 1922. Uh, had a usual childhood of uh, the normal uh, kids of that day. I attended all of the schools, grammar school, and, uh, junior high, and high school. And then I uh, went off to, uh, to prep school uh, for about three years to Darlington, Boys School in Rome, Georgia, and when I graduated from that school, I came back and attended Georgia Tech uh, for four years. But in the meantime, uh, during that time, I um, was called into the service because I had uh, volunteered in uh, December of '42. Uh, to be in the reserve of, of the military, the army, and uh, in 1943, in March of 43, uh, they elected to call me into service. And uh, uh, let's let's go back from the date that uh, you signed up to join the service. Okay. You say you signed up. Can you explain that? Uh, what were the circumstances? Well, uh, the circumstances of Signing up was to, uh, to, to, to actually remain in school. The idea was that uh, we could sign up uh, and, and we would remain in school. Uh, and then when we finished school, then we could pick our branch of service and then uh, we would go from there into active duty. But that wasn't the name of the game. Where were you? In I was school at Georgia at Tech. Time. I was at Georgia Tech. And um, in about uh, six weeks after we had signed up, uh, they sent us a notice to come to uh, Fort McPherson and be inducted into the military. So that was, that was the name, name of that. And, and after we had been inducted, uh, then we went in, into uh, active duty. So that was, the, that was the end of that kind of reserve thing that they uh, had said that they would, but that was part of the usual promise, no promise of, of military at that time. So that was in 1943 when they yes, called you to come to Fort McPherson? Yes, in 43 to Mac McPherson yeah, in, in, in March of 43. So um, from there I was, I was sent to uh, uh, Camp McCall, uh, no, oh, went to school in the first, yeah, the, went, oh yeah, they put us, I'm sorry, Mr. Park. Um, we were put uh, back in school because, uh, and, and they called it um, Army Specialized Training uh, Time, and they, um, and, and that was a way they said at the time they were trying to preserve the schools and not have them all closed. So they put the military, the ones that had been inducted, back into school, and we went back and and uh, and. and did not necessarily follow what we had been following. <laughs> did you go back to Georgia Tech? No, I did not. They, mm -hmm. I did not go back to Georgia Tech, and I had been an industrial management uh, major at Georgia Tech, 
but uh, they proceeded after my taking tests that I would, I don't know why, as an industrial management major, I qualified for advanced engineering, but I did. And so they sent me uh, to North Carolina State Engineering, engineering College, and uh, I attended that uh, for, I guess, about a year or whatever. I'm, I've forgotten the exact time, but anyhow. For that length of time, uh, and since I had not take, taken engineering at Georgia Tech, no, I, had, I intended to it. I did not intend to take engineering, but so uh, I chose civil engineering as my course when I went to uh, North Carolina State and did that until the time that, uh, the, again, the, the cranks were turned and they said, um, we need people in active duty, so they pulled groups of us out. I was one of maybe seven or eight, and we were put into the 13th Airborne Division. And I stayed in the 13th Airborne Division. Uh, Where were this located? The 13th Airborne Division was at, at Camp McCall, which was a satellite camp of Fort Bragg, North Carolina, the big uh, uh, base in North Carolina. Then, at all this time, since I had not been in uh, officer training at any time because my eyes were too bad for me to get into OCS or get in at that time, uh, I, was, I was never in officer training, but I always was applying. Everywhere I went, I was applying for OCS, applying for OCS. So finally, uh, when I was in the 13th Airborne, I kept uh, applying. And, and it just so happened that I was that I went before a board uh, for about the third or fourth time, and uh, and as the 13th Airborne went overseas, I went to Fort Benning to OCS. So <laughs> that was that was uh, my stint there. And that was that was very good luck because I never even uh, had to go overseas at all. So I went to went to OCS uh, for the usual. Uh, three months, 90-day wonders they called us, and came out a second lieutenant in infantry. Uh, and I was, I was sent uh, to um, uh, to camp. Where was that? Where did I go out of Benning? Camp. Yeah, I went to camp. Yeah, I went. I was, I was sent to Camp Blanding, Florida, to uh, train with troops at that uh, at that base, uh, which I did. Uh, for about uh, three or four months, I guess. And then uh, from Camp Blanding, uh, now, I'm, now I'm losing. Was this infantry training? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, at Camp, yeah, Blanding? Camp Blanding was, was, was infantry. Was infantry. Mm -hmm. Now I'm losing it. And then from Camp Blanding, where did I go from Camp Blanding? Uh, well, let's not try to go in chronological yeah. order. What is the next thing that you remember? I'm trying. I'm trying to remember. Uh, from Blanding to. Uh, Well, let's say this. What was your first impression when you got to Camp Blanding? What was your impression of the camp? What did you expect to do there when you were Well, uh, Blanding was, was in Florida, of course, a different geographical area than I, I had been, although it was still in the south. And it was, it was uh, uh, training troops, I mean, as a platoon leader, you know, and you've got raw, raw recruits to, to uh, bring into the service, and that's basically what we were doing. I, I can remember Blanding, in fact, uh, most of the bases I was, I, I can remember uh, that the geography was not like uh, I thought the South was, although I was born and raised in the South, but all these places the military had picked, of course, it was cheap land, so it was all <laughs> sand, <laughs> deep sand. So. Uh, my impression and remembrance of of the, the areas that I trained troops in was was uh, walking, marching, and whatever, living in 
deep sand. That's like sand from the seashore type of sand and camping and everything else. So now you were a second lieutenant at this time. Yes, right? yes. Now, did you lieutenant. actually train the troops, or did you have sergeants who were uh, working well, for you? Well, in in the in the way the military is broken down, uh, you, I'm not sure whether you're. Uh, Familiar with it, but you you have a you have a division, then you have bata regiments, then you have battalions, mm -hmm. and then you have companies, then you have platoons. This is the uh, echelons, and uh, as a platoon leader, you of course at the last level of, of, of group of group training. And then uh, the platoons were all, and you had three platoons in a company, and three companies in a battalion, and three battalions in a regiment, and three regiments in a division. I mean that's the element of the way the so, um, uh, so you were actually a platoon leader. I was a platoon leader, which okay. which has has approximately at that time platoons varied a lot of times uh, in, in in army strength. Sometimes in in, um, in the combat areas, they, they have different strengths than they are in, in the in just the regular uh, what would I say state sides things, but. Our, our platoons were usually made up of about uh, 20 or 30 uh, guys in a platoon, and then in a company you had three three platoons generally in a, in a, in a company, and and, you, <clears throat> and some sometimes you had two platoons in a company. It just depended on the makeup of the, of the companies and the, and and the battalions, and at the head of a platoon was a was a was a lieutenant. And it may be a first or second lieutenant. First lieutenant was in between, and uh, that and the captain was a uh, company commander. And uh, a first lieutenant was was that step above the second lieutenant. Generally, uh, he might have he might sometimes serve as a company commander. First lieutenant might serve as a platoon leader, or two platoons, or whatever. And then uh, a captain served. Uh, uh, he had several platoons and. And uh, a major had a battalion. The battalion was made up usually of three. three. What kind of training was this? What well, it was basically was all this that I'm talking about was infantry training. Okay. That's uh, slog, me, you know, the the the, 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 the sloggers, the, mur the, mm -hmm. the mud, the mud juggers, you know, we, we, that, that was basically what it was. This was infantry. Mm -hmm. uh, later, I got out of, of uh, Infantry and and uh, when I went back to went 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 back to uh, school and uh, did that did that for uh, some time, to, but uh, the 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 school thing was was more uh, learning. I wasn't I wasn't teaching. We were just we were just learning 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 military strategies. Where where did you go to school? Well. I went to, went to school at uh, Fort Benning. Uh, it was when I, because at Fort Benning was where I, I went to. Uh, well, first though, I went I went to school at um, uh, in the North. Where was it? North Carolina. Yeah, I went to. Oh, oh, I'm trying. I'm trying to think of where. Um, you said you got out of the infantry by going to school. Uh yeah, I got in. I, I changed. Uh, let's see. I didn't get out of the infantry at that time because this was when I was in. in see, I get sometimes I get confused in my in, in my history because when I was in the reserve, I was doing different things, and in the thing because I was in the reserve for so many years, and I did other things. And when I did in the in the in the active duty, but active active, I I, I went. I was um, actually uh, I. I got in. I got into the uh, airborne and uh, and served in the airborne for about a about a year. But I was trying all this time to go to OCS, and uh, finally got I got accepted when I was in the airborne. And when that airborne division, which was the 13th, went overseas, I went to Benning to to, to OCS, to officer training school. And uh, came out of that as a sec uh, graduated as a second lieutenant, and then I was sent to sent to train troops, and went. And that's when I went went, went to Florida and was uh, 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 
training training troops uh, down there for that length of time and until I was sent, uh, a whole group of second lieutenants were sent overseas. They were actually, we were actually replacements. The war, the war ended and uh, we were a whole bunch of us were uh, going as, as replacements, you know, they had, they had turnovers uh, to replace online officers and, and troops too, but mainly officers and, uh, and they would replace them. And, and so we were, we were a group that were going over as, as replacements. Well, the war was over, but that didn't stop. You know, the, the, the turn was turning and the wheel was wheeling. And so uh, we, we wound up uh, going, going to um, you know, a shipload of <laughs> second and first lieutenants, <laughs> truly about almost over a thousand of us, you know, board ship going, going as replacements. But the war was over, but they didn't, they didn't stop it. I mean, we just went over and replaced the guys who were over, which was fine. They'd been serving over there, so they got to What come port home. did you leave from? We left from San Francisco and, mm -hmm. and uh, going west, and we went to the Philippines. And we landed in Manila, and then we went up to, finally, and then they broke us all into various ones, and I went up and, and they said, what branch of service do you want to be in? We don't have any infantry over here anymore. So I said, well, the best service I can think of is quartermaster. <laughs> I mean, that's a good service to be in. It's a supply thing. That's how I like that. You know, that's where the food is and the clothing. So uh, I, I went up to uh, Luzon, which is up in Upper San Fernando on the west west coast of, of Luzon. Uh, that Luzon is the main uh, Philippine uh, uh, island, I guess you'd call it, the country. And uh, I, I arrived up there and was uh, assigned a, a, a depot up there. And, how did uh, you get to that location? How did I get to that location? Yes. Oh, we went by train. And that was From that, Manila? From Manila. Yeah. To northern to Luzon. Northern Luzon, mm -hmm. which is is probably seventy to a hundred miles, I guess. Not mm -hmm. not too far because Luzon is not there. Probably only a hundred to hundred and fifty miles long, the whole island. Mm -hmm. And then of course uh, the Philippines have a lot of people think about the Philippines island. The islands are scattered all over the place. Mm -hmm. Luzon is the major chunk. And so. Um, I, I was post, posted up there and uh, had a job, uh, uh, let's see, I had several uh, depot responsibilities over a, a period that, you know, you do this and then they'd say, well, you want to do that and try to transfer it around. But I had a, uh, I had a, um, a supply depot at, at one time, which was uh, quartermaster, so it was, clothing and quartermaster equipment, in which I was depot chief, and, and with that you had responsibility for probably uh, 20 or 30 or 50 workers. We had Japanese prisoners working for us, and that was an interesting uh, adventure too because they didn't speak very much English and we didn't speak very much Japanese. And uh, I said at the time, it says, I'm not going to learn. I'm not going to learn Japanese. I guess I was lazy. I didn't figure I could learn Japanese. Any, I said. I said you will have to speak English. You'll have to learn to speak English. Uh, and and they did. The Japanese were very uh, interesting people, and they 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 picked up on it quick. And we had some uh, very interesting uh, Japanese uh, characters. I did. One of them. One of them always stood out in my mind. I called him Butch because he was a northern Japanese and not a small, as most people encounter Japanese with their shawl. This, this was, the northern Japanese were big, and this, this guy was like about six feet tall, weighed about 200 pounds, so he was big, and, and, but, uh, but a neat guy. And, and, and those guys, I'm telling you, they, they, could, they were so hardy and, learn, and, and had always grown up, Japanese were tough. And, and, and these, these fellows, and of course they were, they were in our camp, they were laborers. And were they prisoners? 
Huh? They prisoners of war? Yeah, they, 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 were, they were prisoners. Uh, they, they weren't, the, I mean, they, had, they lived in compound, but they weren't chained or anything. They were in, a, in an enclosure and everything, and they, and they were in, and we had, we had uh, uh, guards around the various camps, but we had guards around all of our uh, enclosures anyhow, I, and, and we were depots, so we had, we had uh, guards. Our, our guards uh, uh, generally were uh, troops of, of, uh, uh, of you know, of the United States American and, and, and you know, American troops. Well, and I want to, to hold that yes, point for a while. Right. I want to back up. All right. Uh, at the time you uh, left Camp Blanding or Fort Blanding, mm -hmm. and when you were preparing to go overseas, uh, were you married at the time? When did you get married at some point? When did we get married? In 47. 1947, so that was... Uh, okay, that was after you came back. You yeah, were not after married. I, after I came back, I was not married. When okay. I was, uh, yeah, not married. All that right. Uh, but you had family back in uh, Atlanta area. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my, mm -hmm. my family's made up of, of uh, three children. My father was a dentist, uh, and both of them, mother and father, lived quite a long time. Mm -hmm. And my uh, Sisters are oldest, six years older than I am. Brother, three years older than I am. I was the youngest uh, of the group, three hours. And um, did you maintain uh, contact with your family oh, once yeah. you left the states? Yeah, uh, contact with them. Of course, my my brother was in 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 service, and and he had he had wound up uh, uh, in a. He wound up in a German prison camp for uh, uh, years mm -hmm. before I, e I was even called into the service. He had been he had been in the Air Force and was shot down in North Africa, mm -hmm. and uh, captured by the Germans and shipped back to Germany and served uh, in a German prison camp for about a year or more, two years, and uh, till till they were liberated by the Americans, when the Americans and the Russians were both approaching Germany at that time, uh, in the bio history of the World War II, that's what took place. So I think they, I'm not sure, I think that particular German prison camp was interesting and he had a, he would be one to tell stories. <laughs> but uh, they, uh, they were liberated by the Americans uh, because the Russians were coming from one side to liberate them, and they wanted to be a li liberated by the Americans, so they kind of fixed it up. So I'm not sure who, who fixed it up, so they'd be liberated by the Americans. And and so he. So uh, your brother had uh, wartime experiences or combat experience. Oh yeah, he had yeah. combat. He as I say, he was a, he was a pilot in the air, air corps. And it was not the air force then. People yeah, think talking about that, but it was air corps. Yeah, he, he was a he was a bomber pilot he was of a B twenty five. You know that was a medium. They called it a medium bomber at that mm -hmm. time. Actually, they they flew him as as uh, three crew, four crew uh, fighters because at the time that he flew his flights in North Africa, they had you know bombers always were had cover by. Uh, of fighter mm -hmm. planes, but they never flew with cover because they were they flew their own because the B twenty five was almost like a fighter plane. It was mm -hmm. a small bomber, and and it wasn't fast, but for that time it was they were fairly fast, and that's why they played they flew mm -hmm. they flew sorties not as bombers but more more as fighters because they were when they were battling the Germans they, and the Germans were in Italy and they were flying into Italy and they. Do, did some rather interesting uh, fighting tactics. <laughs> did you feel that you were going to have any type of adventure such as that when you left to go overseas? Not really, because the when, by time what happened to me was that, that uh, uh, I was training troops over here uh, in, in basic training, and and nothing actually nothing was doing. Uh, and, and finally, at the end of the war, with the war had ended, 
and then they they pulled a whole bunch of us out, I guess, who had not served overseas, and, uh, and to replace the ones overseas, and so they. Where were you at the time the war ended? The war ended. I was at uh, camp. What was I Fort? I finished. Um, I get. Yeah, I was in Blanding, Blanding, Florida. Yeah, training troops when the, when the war ended. And and uh, and that's when they they as as I say as replacement things they 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 sent a whole bunch of us overseas after the war so we uh, took our uh, okay let's go let's go yeah, back I, again to uh, your base in northern Luzon uh, you said that you traveled there by train yes went up to can you describe your feeling when you first saw your your base where you were going to be living. What did you think of the, the location? Well, I don't, I don't really um, have any clear thing except that that uh, uh, it was, of course, being a, a a new you might say a new land and a new experience that uh, was just uh, like any other uh, new new experience of a mm -hmm. of a different of a different location a different. A different land. It was uh, it, it was it was interesting because it was very different from the United States. You know the what type um, of quarters did you have? <laughs> the quarters the quarters that we had were rather primitive because they they were <coughs> they were they were built of bamboo. Uh, we had bamboo bamboo shacks, I guess you would call them, in which we the officers' quarters we had a Officers' quarters were plush. We had a, a big layout in which we had uh, about four four rooms in this thing. And um, uh, if you can imagine a uh, 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 picture uh, made of made of bamboo, the whole the whole hut. Just if you and you've seen pictures of um, I'm sure people have seen pictures of that type of structure. I mean the floors of bamboo and and. Uh, and they were nicely slatted, so when they washed the floors, everything just kind of went through the through the floors. You know, you didn't have any problems with doing much sweeping or anything, and mm -hmm. uh, uh, and chickens and things ran around under the floors, <laughs> what have you. Uh, but it, and we also it was. Uh, I remember one instance we we had a we adopted a a, a, a baby goat. It was a kid. Uh, small goat. The Philippine, the Filipinos, eat goats and they uh, raised them for food and, and as well as sheep and goats. But we rescued this. We call this goat Noose Bomb, Noose Bomb, and it was a baby kid, and so it became the pet of, the, of our little group <laughs> and, and wandered around. And uh, I'm not sure whether we had. A, had it tied or whether it just followed us around, but anyhow, it was just a, it was a, a little animal, it wasn't a full grown thing, so I just recall that particular instance, it was rather uh, amusing, this, this, uh, this, this goat, because we had, we had feed, we had feed it various and sundry things, but uh, we found that it, uh, it was so small and it had lost its mother, it wandered away, whatever, so we, we fed it by taking them, um, what do we do? We got a, 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 I don't know whether we used a rubber glove, I guess that's what we used and made a nipple of the rubber, rubber glove banded around a bottle, you know, to let them, <laughs> let them feed, suck on the, on, on, on the rubber glove as a, as a means of, of, of feeding, feeding. So everybody in the camp sort of took care of it. Well, yeah, it was just uh, the, yeah. well, one, not necessarily the whole camp, but just our, our, oh, yeah. our particular yeah, think, yeah. small group that we uh, did that, but, but anyhow, that was the uh, the the area. The our expertise, as I say, was we were just in in in, in charge in charge of security of, mm -hmm. of the of the total thing, and so um, we had we had uh, uh, troops who acted as guards, and then we we were the officers who checked on what they were doing, and and we had. We had responsibility for a whole village in which we had 
various types of depots around the village, whether they had a clothing depot or food depot or, or other materials depots. When you so. say the village, you mean the village of Filipino people? Yes, yeah, it would be a little town, mm -hmm. and, and, and uh, we just happened to be stationed there, and we had our, our various... Oh, okay. uh, so uh, this was, America had bases there? Yeah, all, this was kind of all, 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 over the, all over the place, because mm -hmm. the Philippines had been occupied, poor Philippines uh, had been occupied by the, by the Spanish and by mm -hmm. the Americans and by others, you know, at times, depending on who had won what and mm -hmm. where the wars had been fought. So these actually Filipinos were, uh, were a mixture of many races. They were mm -hmm. Chinese, they were Japanese, they were Americans, Indians, and true Filipinos. People have already seen true Filipinos, the Indians, didn't even look like what most people visualize Filipinos. Usually they visualize Filipinos with the Spanish look because they'd say, oh, that's a Filipino. But, but the true Filipinos were very dark, almost like Africans, and, and, and uh, especially the ones out of the hills, out of the mountains, and, and, and uh, may have read about this or not, but they were headhunters. And, and these these characters were tough. They were Indians out there, and they and and uh, I have some pictures of some of them somewhere. I didn't bring them, but they had some pictures of them. You know where they when they called them headhunters, what they did they they uh, uh, when they got into battles, whoever won decapitated their their enemies. You know and hung those heads. On, on strings, and they go around. I mean, they had, and their heads would would shrink. Have you never encountered any? Oh yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. We saw them all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, about coming out of the hills, and they were they were interest. They were very interesting mm -hmm. people. They didn't speak English, and they they weren't they 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 weren't hunting us. They weren't they weren't aggressive warriors. Things they were well, this this fighting would well, would be amongst mm -hmm. themselves. But the interesting thing too was that, that uh, they were they they didn't have a lot of food. When the Americans came, we had and we were in the quartermaster, so we had tons of food. We had they shipped food over there by the by the train, not by the shiploads for the invasion of Japan, which never took place. Mm -hmm. So in the quartermaster, we had stockpiles of things you would not believe. I mean, we had stockpiles of. For instance, canned planters' peanuts. Have you ever thought of mm -hmm. 40,000 bags of canned planter peanuts? Now, a bag of, of canned peanuts had about 50 or 60. It was like a case of peanuts. But they had, mm -hmm. the cases had deteriorated in shipping and everything, so they wound up in uh, croca sack or uh, bags. So we had those things mounded. 20 and 30 feet high in depots, mm -hmm. just just tons of them. So what do you do with them? <laughs> well, we, <laughs> you give them away if you can, you know, and we'd have them, we'd have the Filipinos and the Chinese. The Chinese were into the Philippines too. The Chinese had always been into the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And they were Chinese, as you know, have been always uh, a race who has traveled all over the place and, and been been a, a society that's moved all over the, the world. And, and <clears throat> so they would, the Chinese would come in and, and, uh, and of course with my, if I'm taking too much time, okay. and the Chinese would, would come in and they, and, and a lot of times they had, they had a lot of money, so they'd uh, buy up things. They'd buy, and in fact they would, they would buy uh, shiploads of things that the Americans had shipped over there. You know, and they'd put them up for sale. It, maybe they'd pay pay a thousand dollars for the ship and everything in it. You know, and and take it, and they'd sell it. <laughs> like a. Awesome. Did you have Filipinos working? Yes. For you at we your. Filipinos, Filipinos were, were were very much working for us. Uh, some Chinese, but but uh, mostly Filipinos, and there were black work battal battalions that were uh, uh, labor labor battalions. So there was a it was a it was a big mix. It really was a big mix. How did the Filipinos and the Japanese get along? Uh, did they come into contact with each other? They, 
I know I never found that there was any 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 uh, uproarious things. Every once in a while, uh, and you don't, and, and I don't think it was a racial thing between them. We'd we'd have something would happen. Somebody there would, there would be a there would be a killing or something you know, which had to be investigated. Things like that, but you didn't have a a, a lot of it. You know, they the, were the doing we because we had. We had courts set up for all the various uh, infractions of the rules and things to do. Had court martials of things, but they, we, what was it? We court martialed one guy. Of, um, what was it? He did something. He did on duty, but uh, the various things with the guard. We we had we had guards primarily in what we were doing. And we were in charge of the guards, and, and so in making your rounds, I can remember one time I <laughs> go around, and, and I, my sport was it was terrible sport, but it was it, it had its effect, and, and it didn't injure anybody. But uh, sleeping on guard duty is not a very good thing. You know that's that's a that's a major offense of sleeping on guard duty. And a couple of times, not often, maybe once or two, I think it's at least twice. Uh, I found uh, God, you know, in making my rounds, guy sleeping on guard duty. So to wake him up <laughs> and take my 45 <laughs> and get it pretty close to him and <laughs> fire it off. <laughs> and if you can imagine a, a guy that sleep on guard, you have a 45 ball, not right in his ear, but you know, about two or three feet away. And, Quite a noise because 45 was loud, right there, but that was a good way of wake, waking up that, the guard. That would wake me up. <laughs> yeah, so. When you think back uh, on your tour of duty in the Philippines, what is the most memorable thing that stands out in your mind? Oh, God. Most memorable thing, yeah. Anyway. So there was nothing particularly exciting, well, I don't, nothing particularly emotionally. Yeah, I, I can't. You know, my, my, my brain just doesn't work work good now. I, I'm, I'm sure there were things that I that I will, would recall at some other time, rather than right this moment, about things that happened. But I, um, I can't really pull into into mind anything that that uh, of. And this was over there. You're talking about over there. No, Nothing. I'm just asking. Just any, anything. Yeah, while you were there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm. How long were you based in the Philippines? About mm, nine or ten months. Mm -hmm. Nine or ten months. I think that's about. about it. One wasn't quite. It was just about a year. I remember I I I. I uh, Went over there in the spring, I think, and came back in the late fall, I guess. This is the late about, fall about of 46? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And Craig, when you left to the Philippines, where did you come back to? What, what port? Came back to San Francisco. Came back to the same, same port. And, and then, uh, and then went, went from there. You know, I'm trying to think that's where. Yeah, that's right. They, yeah, they, yeah, they, they, they shipped us to Fort, to, uh, Fort Save, Houston, mm -hmm. Texas, to, to get out. Is was, 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 okay. was the next step. Uh, so you came back to be separated. To be separated. From the yeah. yeah, I didn't, I didn't uh, do, I didn't do any more duty with, with, uh, with troops. Okay. So. Oh, I did. Went back. Oh, yeah. So it reminds me, I went back to school because I hadn't finished school. But and after you got out of the service, yeah, I went you back, went to, back school. to school. Yeah, okay. I, had to, had to, yeah I had about, I was determined mm -hmm. at that time to finish school. But you were separated from the service at that time. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. When I went back to school, I was separated at Fort Sam Houston. They said okay. goodbye, and, mm -hmm. and and then I got out and took about ten days or two weeks off, and then I. Uh, Whenever the my classes started up at school, because I'd get back and in, back into school, because I had just about a year year more to go to to get my degree. From now, Georgia what school Tech. is this? Uh, Georgia Tech. Yeah, Georgia okay. Tech. Yeah. So that's when you came back to Atlanta to Georgia yeah, Tech. Yeah. That's that's when you met your wife. Is, is that correct? 
No, I'd known her. I didn't want to. <laughs> <I'd, laughs> I'd known her for six years before we. Oh, even before you left to go. Oh yeah, yeah, so. yeah. We've been we've been going mm -hmm. long long time. Okay. So you were father. I met her when she was twelve. <laughs> oh, okay. I understand. Met her, didn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, not only were you communicating with your family, but you were also communicating with your. Oh yes, yeah, with her. With her, with her so, much yeah. more than I was with the family. <laughs> the so, were you engaged to be married at the time you went over? Um, was I no, of getting married? We weren't, we weren't engaged. We were engaged. What time did we officially get engaged? Can you remember? About, about uh, Easter. Huh? Mm -hmm. About Easter in 1947. 46. Mm. 47. 47. Yeah, Easter 47. You'll have to pardon my. No, that's okay. I understand. <laughs> just has blanks in it. Well, this has been uh, interesting. I, I wanted to bring that out because uh, uh, she had said she had been writing to you. Yeah. I was trying to bring that in, you know. Yeah, she uh, she wrote. Uh, I got a lot of at least one a week, sometimes sometimes two a week, and mm -hmm. so we we. Uh, she kept me up with everything that was going on, <laughs> and I didn't have much to tell her about what was going on or where I was. It was pretty much, pretty much the same military. You know? <laughs> so you cool. came back and you were separated. You went back came to back, Georgia Tech. Went back to Georgia Tech uh, uh, to finish to finish up. I had a I had a a year a year to go mm -hmm. to to graduate, which I. Which I did, and I got out in '47, I guess it was 1947. But you remained in the reserve. Mm -hmm. Yes, I. Um, mm -hmm. You know that's an interesting thing because I said after all this, I don't want any more part of the mil no more part of the military. And so when we came to that part of of getting out, I was reminded by. Uh, a sergeant who was there, or maybe it was a, an officer. Anyhow, he said, "Now, Lieutenant Barnwell, you don't really want to get out of the reserve and get completely out because we may have another war. <laughs> we were present before we had two more wars." <laughs> and he says, "Now you can get out, and then you'll be drafted. You know, or go back in and say." And you'd rather fight it as, a, as an officer. I said, "Well, maybe that maybe that's true." So uh, I signed up. I signed up for the reserve, and and uh, so with that, uh, I started my reserve thing and and, and did that uh, in various types of reserve thing. I did everything from from uh, reserve via correspondence at times. And, and, and then in active reserve sometimes. You had to put in uh, some active part during the year, like two weeks of summer camp was mm -hmm. generally where you had to, you had to have, because you had to have points, and you had to make 50 points as a minimum number of points. One point for each time you uh, attended a, a, a meeting. 50 points per year? Yeah, 50 mm -hmm. points per year. So mm -hmm. if you went every, uh, Two weeks or whatever it was, it normal every two weeks uh, you mm -hmm. would bill that much, but then you had to have others, so you'd go to go to two weeks active duty or whatever to make you always make sure you had that 50 points because that's what built your retirement. So, so you did successfully. I made 20, yeah, I made uh, when, when I got 21 years and something. I says this is it. <laughs> so I retired. I retired from the reserve. And what <laughs> and the, grade were you when you retired? I was a major. You're a major. Okay. Yeah. So I finally got out. <laughs> but it's been good, you know. Mm -hmm. In fact, if I'd stayed, I could have stayed one more year, and I made like colonel. It was then at that time you didn't have to really do anything. It was a time thing, you know, mm -hmm. a time of this. So if I'd stayed, I think it was like nine months more. I was my lieutenant colonel. I says, I don't want any more. I'm through. I'm through. You know, you get to a point where you're mm -hmm. saturated. So I decided I wasn't going to. At this point, I said, you know, I really should have stayed at nine months because the difference in the pay, you know, for and because pay goes on. See, I draw, I draw a time of pay now. Mm -hmm. 
I don't draw as much as a major as I would have as a light colonel. <laughs> so anyhow, that's, that's hindsight. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been very interesting. Is there anything else you would like to add? I don't know. I can't. I can't think of anything that I haven't already told you. I feel like I've run my mouth more than I should. <laughs> well, not at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that was uh, interesting to recall some of those things, and that's, it's, it's well, that's good. what this is all about. Yeah. 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 And how do you compare uh, the uh, the feeling in the country at that time during World War II as compared to today? the degree of patriotism and the degree of commitment? Well, it's hard, you know, I, that's always a kind of, I think, a subjective question because, mm -hmm. you, you know, it's how you feel about it. I mean, you can say, well, I feel it's so and so and so. But, uh, I'm, I'm not in the, in the reserve any, anymore. I've got, completely gotten out, so I don't have that contact anymore. But I, I don't know. I I, I feel that uh, probably uh, they're not now is is maybe gung ho or in it because we're not uh, really you know as much maybe committed to that kind of thing. We haven't we haven't particularly we, well. We still got you know combat troops all over the, all over the all over the world and, mm -hmm. and 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 probably will. Maybe it's because I'm not I'm not close to it. I'm as I say I'm away from the, the reserve, so I don't feel. You're not affiliated with any uh, uh, veteran service organizations, like the American Legion or no, no American Legion. And that's anything like that. No, I never, I never, I never continued to stay in any of that stuff. I guess I just drifted away because my the business I was in didn't really lend itself to that kind of thing while I was while I was doing that and then when I completely retired I just said well forget it all you know some of some of my friends probably are still I don't know who my age are still involved in any kind of thing that I know of they all they all you know when you when you get into your 80s you say well that's an, that's enough huh? oh oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I take that back. I have a have a friend here, a friend. He's a he's a we we call him our our what do we call him our in law what do we, co in -law. our co in laws. His 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 uh, son is married to our daughter, so that's the relationship. <laughs> Great guy, but he's he's a well he's a bird colonel. Uh, you know, who came out, he, he didn't go to West Point, but he might as well have. I mean, he went to went to one of the military schools, mm -hmm. one West Point. Mm -hmm. So he's always, he's kind of stayed. So he stays uh, close to the military. Yeah, yeah. He stayed into retirement, on active duty. Huh? Will he remain he's, on active duty? Well, he's, he's, he's in, no, well, I guess he did, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. He stayed in 30-something uh, years. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He, he he went the whole way, and now of course he's 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 like I am retired reserve I guess is what you call it. Mm -hmm. Well, this has been very interesting. <laughs> I bet. I thank, I thank you very much. <laughs> A lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. and uh, the information that we have talked about and that you have uh, shared with us will be available uh, in the archives here at the Atlanta History Center. If I ever get back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Barrow. We really appreciate this. <laughs> well, you've been nice to put up with all of this. Oh.